I'm Stuart Martin, a geospatial industry lead at ESRI South Africa, and as part of our online seminars, I'm going to be talking about trends in image processing. It's all a matter of perspective, and traditionally we have used satellite imagery or aerial photography that has been taken at a nadir or perpendicular to the ground, which has allowed us to create orthophotos or to do traditional line mapping. Over time, we've got used to using oblique imagery, which has given us a, a, a slightly different perspective off nadir or with a high incidence angle, which has allowed us to look at the sides of buildings, see construction type, measure heights, and in the case of a UAV flying very close to a building, inspect the building. We now are, however, able to take advantage of horizontal imagery taken from a camera mounted on top of a vehicle, or even using your own mobile phone where you stand and take a, a multitude of photos around an area, and are they then able to ingest those into a GIS and use them to pick up or measure position or measure height or, or distances on the ground. I'll be starting the seminar talking about satellite imagery and how we are able to use the satellite imagery within ArcGIS. The first example is taking advantage of a product called SecureWatch from Maxar or Digital Globe, which allows us to ingest satellite imagery directly from their streaming service without having to first download it and do some of those traditional image processing tasks that we're used to. This is this image here is showing us Central Park in, in New York, and the image on the left is November 2019 versus the image on the right is April 2020, illustrating the impact of lockdown in an area of, of, of New York. The second image is very similar, also a secure watch image ingested inside of ArcGIS um, desktop, and in this case, you're looking at a car park outside of a factory in, Lo in Oxford, in the UK, and this is showing you one side, this is October last year, once again, lots of cars in the car park on the right hand side, absolutely no cars or very few cars, which is illustrating the impact of lockdown in an area of, of, of England. Closer to home, we have the use of planet data. We can read a service from planet directly into ArcGIS Pro, which allows us to get access to three meter data on a daily basis. In this example, on the left, you're seeing an image from the 19th of March, which is showing just before lockdown or a week or two before lockdown and illustrating cars on the road, cars in car parks, versus on the right hand side, no cars on the highway. This was the day that our lockdown started. Here, Sentinel-2 data being served from the ESRI ArcGIS Online or Living Atlas of the World web services, and you are able to either access those either through a tool called the Sentinel-2 Explorer, or in this case, using Sentinel-2 Views and bringing it directly into ArcGIS Pro. Here I'm showing you an image from April last year in false color infrared, and you can see the planes, I've highlighted them in these yellow circles, and the planes at the terminal buildings, there are a lot of planes uh, waiting at the end of the runway to take off, etc. Versus in April this year, there are very few planes, if none, at the terminal buildings, there are none waiting to take off, and the rest are being parked. And if you look at the, the little yellow circle on the far left, at the bottom, you can see many planes parked there. The this picture is illustrating a Sentinel 5P satellite, and, and this satellite allows us to look at things like nitrogen dioxide or air pollution. Here we are reading the satellite image directly into ArcGIS Pro. It understands the metadata, so we have access to all the, the auxiliary information which comes with the satellite, and we understand it, and we are able to do processing on it. This example here is showing us nitrogen dioxide levels in March, April last year versus now March, April this year. And after lockdown in Europe, you can see the dramatic decrease in air pollution levels over Europe. So finally, I spoke about oblique imagery or high incidence angle imagery. Here we are using the direct read capability where we are able to understand the, the details of how the image was taken and the, the typical, the, the incidence angle of that image and where the satellite was when it took the image, 
so that we can show this picture. This is Cape Town, just south of Parliament, where we are able to look at a building. This is the garden shopping center and measure the height of that building and start seeing the, the construction method or what, what the building looks like from the side using this imagery and a term called ICS or image coordinate space. So we're able to take advantage of that image coordinate space. Next, I'll be talking about aerial photography and how we're able to take advantage of some of the developments in this regard. Here, I have a high resolution, 10 centimeter aerial photo of the city of Tswani, and in this case, showing a school in the east of Pretoria. You can see the sports fields, you can see the tennis court, and if you've got a keen eye, you might even see the airplane in the northwest of the image right next to the sports fields. However, the city of Swanee has also captured a infrared band in the acquisition of this imagery, and this gives us unique capabilities. Note the hockey field is astroturf and not grass as it, it seemed when we looked at it in, in typical RGB or natural color as it was green. Here we are now able to do traditional remote sensing techniques, you could look at indices such as NDVI on this imagery and do some classification, which wouldn't have been possible if we had only had a RGB image. As I spoke about earlier, the concept of oblique imagery or high incidence angle imagery using in this case a cone camera or a camera that has a nadir, downward looking image, and an image taken from the left, the right, and, and the front and the back. So in this case, this imagery is we received from the Saw Plikes municipality or Kimberley. And here you are able to see all four sides of a building. You're able to see the construction. You can, you can measure heights. You can understand condition of this building. And this could be used for valuations of this property. So this gives us a unique capability to take advantage of this imagery and to be able to use it in day-to-day decision-making. Next, I'd like to talk about drone or UAV surveys. In this case, you can see an image of our building in Midrand and the flight path that was flown by the drone. Some of the products or 3D products we are able to derive from this are firstly a point cloud. So in this case, it's been colorized by the image itself. Or this point cloud can be classified into height above the ground or height above sea level. And finally, it can be classified in buildings versus vegetation, tall vegetation or trees versus grass. The last 3D product is a textured mesh. So in this case, we have an image, a photorealistic image of the building, which is one's able to load into a scene and spin it around and see the building from different angles. The 2D products we are able to derive are an orthophoto. So here you see the building from Nadia, and we are able to see all the, the photovoltaic cells on the top of the roof, or in this case, a digital surface model, which we can use to, to understand and measure heights, etc. But drones are not only limited to, to using air, um, cameras on them. In this case, we are looking at a LiDAR server. This is the University of Cape Town campus, and a drone flight was flown by Quartz Geosolutions, and they had a LiDAR system mounted on the drone. And in this case, you can see the point cloud colored by height above the ground, height above sea level. Uh, I've superimposed a image of the point cloud where they've started to classify ground versus buildings versus vegetation. Finally, from an imagery perspective, I'd like to talk about the terrestrial imagery or the horizontal imagery that we spoke about earlier. Here is a survey we did in the office where we walked around with a camera a typical mobile phone and took photos of the area. So what you're seeing there are the visualization cones of the pictures that were taken using, in this case, an iPhone. We are able to bring them into this orientated image catalog and work out where we have coverage. So that's the green. So we are able to see where we can look at the image from different perspectives. And you'll note there's a cone visible there. So it's telling us these multiple images taken for that area. And if you look at the little insert, that's the image that was taken. We are able to measure position. We are able to measure um, lengths, uh, so it's all the height of the building. And this becomes very powerful because it means we can go out with our cell phone, take photos of a, something in progress, such as a building site, or in the case of an accident of an accident, and bring this data back in. And using these tools, start 
making sense of that imagery and using it to understand change over time or to do some basic measurements with. Lastly, I'd like to talk about the use of artificial intelligence inside of the ESRI platform. ESRI has been developing machine learning and deep learning tools which you can use to extract features from imagery. They are integrated both within ArcGIS server and ArcGIS desktop. And in this case, just as an example, I'm using Worldview 3 imagery and some of the work that Maxwell's been doing in extracting building footprints. This example here shows the building footprints extracted over an area in Brazil. However, Maxar has been able to develop a building footprint model for the whole of Africa, and this data is now available for use. To conclude this online seminar, I'd like to summarize. ESRI is looking at imagery from many perspectives. We support a diversity of sensors. We support both on-premise and cloud-based access to imagery. We provide tools to visualize, analyze, and process the data, and we are able to extract meaningful content out of the imagery. I hope you've enjoyed this seminar and our whirlwind tour from New York to Europe, to Joburg, to Kimberley, to Eric Kuruleni, and to Cape Town. And I wish you all the best. Stay safe, stay home, and stay informed. Thank you.